What's up guys? I am so excited. I don't even know what to do with myself at this point, but uh, this is a, a video that I wanted to shoot in response to the R8 video and the frothy video that just came out. And a, a lot of people have contacted me and said, oh my gosh, this is actually working and it actually makes sense. And I'm going, I know, I know, I know, I can't believe it. And we're going back and forth and talking, but in that conversation, uh, we're coming up with some cool questions. I was like, oh, you know what? I never thought of that or whatever. So I, like I've told you before, I love having these interactions with emails and phone calls and things like that. So um, it spurred a lot of things and I want to get this on camera as fast as humanly possible and go through basically a bunch, 15, 20 questions that I didn't uh, address in the first and second video, which by the way, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a bunch of links up here, click on them, watch them, and then come back here. And then uh, there's some really thought provoking questions uh, in here. So, and I've got a ton of emails and so huge thank you to you guys. Here we go. Number one, the biggest one. Is this a substitute for a proper full wash with water? The answer is no. And here's why. A proper full wash with water is completely uh, different mindset. Meaning fr frothy, the aerator, this whole concept here was thought of to, uh, assist someone in an apartment building, they, uh, and they're in a drought, they're in the desert, et cetera, et cetera. All those situations where you don't have access to free flowing water or a hose. Having water drip or flow and carry the contaminants off your car is amazing. It's the, one of the world's best besides oil, lubricant, right? We use it for lots of things. So if you have water, I'm telling you right now, use it. If you, I guess the other question is, is this gonna get rid of uh, can I get rid of all my three buckets and the soaps and the wash? No, 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 no. This is just when you're in that jam, you're like, oh man, I live in an apartment building and I, I, I got to clean my car, but I don't have any water. And so this is where this comes in. So it's kind of a apples and oranges kind of thing. Again, you can use it with water. I showed it a bunch of different ways. I, I, for me in my business, I rinse the cars down a lot for my particular clientele, meaning they're not going out in the mud or whatever. It's a very expensive car and it's just got a little bit of this and here, this and that, but I'm not gonna spray wax it, right? I'm gonna rinse it down, do the whole thing, frothy it, wipe it, perfect. I just came back from doing a job uh, on, on an Aston Martin, super soft paint and it worked out amazing. So the bottom line is I actually use it for my business, so that's why I was so excited to share it with everybody and now the feedback I'm getting like, dude, this actually works. I'm like, I know. So it's been a, it's been a really uh, roller coaster week and it's a lot of fun. So that's number one. Number two is saying, uh, they ask, is there, can you guarantee 100% no scratching? And I'm saying to myself, oh my gosh, you guys put yourself in my sort of shoes here. That's almost impossible to answer because there's so many variations and it's basically a case by case basis. For me, I'm, I'm seeing and the people who have contacted me and been like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting any scratch, excuse me, scratches with it when I'm using the proper uh, techniques and the proper amount of, of fluid and frothy and uh, the, the towels and things like that and rolling it. So I, I'm not seeing any scratching. Is it possible? Yeah, of course it's possible to scratch. When I first got the, uh, the, R, the uh, 964 painted, when I, I'm not even kidding. I, I really went like this and it scratched the paint. I mean, you look at it, it scratched the paint, you know, that kind of joke. So it, it's impossible for me to be like, absolutely, it's not gonna scratch the paint. For me, and you do it right in a normal car, in normal situations, yes. Which is why we're gonna get into my little nerd graph here where it's basically a guide um, and so let's get into the third question, which is this, when do you, and this is a really good one, when do you, uh, where's the line where it's like, hey, I'm gonna use frothy for this, this, and this, but when it gets this bad, I'm gonna shift over to a full wash and, and multiple buckets and, wash and, 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 and water and things. And I go, okay, cool. I get that concept of where you're going with that. At the end of the day, remember in the back of your mind, this was designed and built for no water, for those people, for the millions of people out there that are like, oh, I can't wash my car, I can't maintain it, I can't do it because I don't have anything that lubricates. And I worked my butt off to try to figure out how do, I, how do I create the most lubrication possible in that tough situation of no water, i.e. lubrication. So this is where the focus is, but I also see that people are using that, oh, I still have a hose, but I'm still using it, and I'm, and I'm going to use uh, the, the frothy. Okay, cool, that's what I'm doing as well. But where is that line where it's like, all right, man, it's like way too dirty. It's like this car was dipped in mud. I'm not gonna go through 50 gallons of this stuff. I'm just gonna go and use my hose. Where's that line? So here's the here's the um, my nerdy chart here. X and Y axis, normal graph. You guys know what I'm talking about. Level of dirt is down here. So we have, you know, perfectly clean is gonna be zero. You know, um, Pebble Beach car, for lack of a better word. 
dusty, driving dust with the wheels a little bit dirty. You have a week of driving and it rained, and then you have caked on mud, salt, weeks with no wash, and then the worst case scenario is, you know, you dipped your car in mud or whatever in this example. And again, I'm sure some mathematician will say this is not to scale or whatever, but I'm trying to prove a point about paint and where that line is. And I'm trying to guide you and say like, hey, you have to use a little bit of your judgment and remember what this is and what you're doing and kind of experiment a little bit. And if you run into any issues, you guys know you can email me or call me and we'll figure it out. But on this side over here, this is the method to clean while whilst minimizing scratching, meaning your focus is minimizing, minimizing scratching, not just removing the dirt, but how do I minimize the scratch during that process? And of course you have spray wax, right? When it's a little dusty, you can kind of get away with spray wax. You know what I'm saying? Rinse and hydrate, the, the thing we've been doing forever. It's been fantastic. Or you know what? It's got a little bit of salt on it. Uh, you know, I'm getting nervous. Uh, you can rinse, frothy, and then hydrate. We talked about that. Then we have rinse, and we have a one bucket method with soap and the, and the uh, microfiber towel. I'm gonna show you guys that. Uh, frothy, and then hydrate, because it's a little bit more dirty and the paint's particularly soft. We'll talk about that. Rinse, rinse, foam gun, then rinse again, and then your three bucket method. That is a very common method. And then some crazy things that take, you know, two, three hours to wash a car, which sometimes, it, the car requires that. If it's a very old car and it's extremely like there's tiny little, uh, you know, a bit of uh, one mil of clear coat or something, and it's a, you know, again, a very famous and expensive car, then you got to spend some time. That's just part of the game. Doing it right isn't always easy. So this one up here is rinse, foam, rinse, and then using brand new towels, multiple microfiber towels on the, on the paint. So anyways, this is a scale of like going nuts, and there's 5,000 versions in between, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm trying to make a point here. So. The first thing is black soft paint. Now black soft paint, as it becomes dusty and it gets a little driving dust and it starts becoming dirtier, you have to go up this slope faster to, to, to do the best thing that you can possibly do because it's so soft. I mean, you get multiple buckets, lots of water, the whole thing. That, that's just how it works, right? And then once you get to a point um, where you have to use your judgment, meaning like it's been weeks and it's been raining and there's stuff on the bumper and the whole thing, guess what? You gotta, you gotta do the best thing to avoid those scratches. Do you see where I'm going with this? Now we say we have average paint. Average paint's gonna be a linear slope, right? It's gonna be, if it's a little bit dusty, you can spray wax it. If it's a little driving dust, but it hasn't rained, you can rinse and hydrate, or you can rinse frothy and hydrate. So it, it's, it's, it's a normal progression. Now, if you go to something that's really hard paint and let's say a light color, meaning you're not gonna see as many scratches. They're still gonna be there, but you're not gonna see as many. It's a little bit of a trick of the eye. You can have a little bit more of a, of a, a softer slope. Why? Because as the car becomes dirtier, you don't necessarily need to go to the 15 buckets and the whole thing because it's not as soft. So, and, and then as you get to the pure mud where the car fell into a, a, you know, a thing of mud, then you're gonna have to do it. So do you see kind of the concept of where I was going? So that's why the question number three, this answers that where I say, hmm, I can't, I can't tell you where that line is on your particular car, but I can give you this little bit of a graph and this thought process to guide you like, hmm, maybe, maybe I'll use frothy here. You gotta test a little bit here and there. So that's, number, that's question number three. The next one, can you use uh, with other products? Can you use the aerator with other products? Here's the, here's the technical answer. The technical answer is with a, a, a machine like this, you can um, put other things in it like uh, soap or brute or anything like that, but you, you wanna try to not um, mix the two products or cross contaminate. Why? Because the pucks that are in here, uh, if you use like heavy degreasers and things like that, and then hop back to, to frothy and heavy degreasers, you could ruin those pucks. When I say ruin those pucks, you can actually, just, after a year or something, you take them out and you just replace them. So it's not that big of a deal, um, but I'm, I'm telling you uh, what I was taught uh, during this, this whole process here. So, you know, you, that's why I have multiple aerators and I was a little bit hesitant to say that on camera because I don't want you guys thinking, I'm like, buy 15 aerators. No, if you have your aerator and, or foamer and you like it, then use that one. The point of the story is try to keep them as separate as possible and it becomes more and more important to do that as the chemical becomes stronger. Does that make sense? So that's my answer to that one. Next one is, oh, should we use distilled water? I say, yeah, if you're gonna use it, if you have distilled water, great, but it's been designed to, uh, for tap water. Uh, what's the difference between a foam cannon and frothy, or, I mean the aerator, a foam cannon that we normally use, the dispersant is water, in this case, because I've designed it, and the whole purpose of this is not to have water, the dispersant is air. So I thought that was a, a fun, reasonable question. How much product are you gonna use? Is it really gonna be 20 to 30 cars? These are all questions on the emails. Uh, 20 to 30 cars. 
that is an estimate based on all of my experience and what I've been doing with it. And I think it's fair. Some people may have a little bit less, meaning are you doing a bigger space or a bigger car? Is the car dirtier? Is it black? Are you trying to put, um, are you putting, using too much product? So the fear that I had was people have a mentality of seeing the foamer with water and soap and you cover the whole thing and it's dripping and, it, and, and the water runs off it. That's the way that that's supposed to work. Totally makes sense. Um, but this one is just a different product. But a lot of times the habit of people are like, oh my gosh, I have to use a, a lot of uh, frothy. So the point of what I'm saying is be careful um, if you find that you're only doing 10 or 12 cars, you may be using too much. You don't need to soak the whole thing. You just need to get enough so that it lifts. But again, adjust as you get lower on the, on the car, you may have to use a little bit more. So 20 to 30, I think is fair. It could be more and it could be a little bit less, but I think that's fair. So next one. Uh, when did the new hydrate come out to the market? That was March 27th uh, during the R8 video. So that day going forward, it's always going to be the new hydrate. And they said, hey, in this question, can we use the old hydrate as well? The answer is yes, you can, but there's going to be a lot of extra wiping and it doesn't, you, you know, you have to be a little bit careful. Again, it's a little bit of a case by case, meaning if you have old hydrate, I would say, you know, continue to use it in the wet aspect. The new hydrate is more, it's designed specifically for dry and wet. So you're gonna have to test that out a little bit, but I, I, would, I would kind of say, no, just stick with the new stuff. And if you have the old stuff, just stay with the old process of doing it with the wet. Does that make sense? Uh, next one, can I bring uh, the foamer to, the sh to car shows? That, this is the perfect way. You're in the middle of a field, you don't have a hose. You just cleaned it up the night before, you drove 20, 30 miles, whatever, and you get there and it's super dusty. This is absolutely perfect. Um, just take the air out of it, leave it somewhere so it doesn't flip and flop and, and you know, bang around on the car or whatever, but this is a game changer. Once you, remember, the purpose of this is just to lift the dirt and carry it away. That's it. it it's a knife and, and that's what it does, or it's a fork and that's all it does. It's not a spork. It doesn't do 50 things. So what am I, what am, what am I trying to get the point across is it's, it's not going to make your car ridiculously shiny. By default it does because you're taking the dirt off of it, but I'm trying to get something across to you guys that it's sole purpose is to remove the dirt with as much lubrication as humanly possible I find on the market in a situation where you don't have water. Car show is a perfect one because you're not carrying a hose when you're at a car show. Then afterwards you can put your waxes and, and uh, you know, whatever you want on there. You can do put mud on the, the tires and the rims and spray wax, all that kind of stuff you can do afterwards. So that's, that's a good question. Um, I want to change the pattern of the frothy spray or the direction. If you loosen the, this nut right here, you can actually spin this and then tighten it back up again and you can have it at any angle you want. So that was a good question. Um, does this work with clay? The answer is, uh, the ultimate answer is I would say no uh, for multiple reasons and I'll try to make it quick. Uh, I like to have as much lubrication as possible. Clay is an abrasive as you know. So if you're doing something that is clearly an abrasive, like it's not just like, oh, is it gonna scratch or it's not? Clay is gonna scratch because it's an, an abrasive if you use it wrong. So use it with as much lubrication as possible. You see me, I put the wash mitt and I, I, not only the soap, but I'm squeezing my hand in the wash mitt to get the water out at the same time. Or if I had a third hand, I'd put, have a hose at the same time. You, you get what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I don't think you should be using that. There's no like emergency where you don't have water around and you're clang in, in my, it just doesn't make any sense. So uh, the long, uh, the short answer is I, I would stay away from it. I'm sure it'll probably work, but why, why waste the money and time doing that? Do it, do it properly. Um, does it work on vinyl wrap? Yep, vinyl wrap, clear bra is totally cool. It's just the same concept of picking up the dirt and carrying it away. Vinyl wraps, you just, I think have to be a little bit more careful than clear bras in my opinion, because they're a little bit thinner and a lot of them don't have the self-healing qualities but ultimately it's the same thing as paint in theory about lifting and moving. The same thing for clear coats, same thing for clear bras, anything that's on your car, lift and carry it away as carefully as possible. And again, if you have water, use water. Next, the number of towels used. Uh, it seems like there'll be a lot more towels uh, being used. How many do you think will uh, ultimately blah, blah, blah. There, there, how many towels are you gonna use during the whole thing? So I call this a zero sum game. Zero sum game means if you have lots of water, you could probably use less towels. If you don't have any water, you, you're gonna use more towels. You can't have, no towels and no water, it, it, it sort of um, doesn't make any sense, it's illogical because there's nothing carrying it away. Doesn't that make sense? The water is carrying everything away. If you don't have any water to carry it away, you need something else. Microfiber is designed to pick up, carry, and pull it away. So yes, you're gonna use more. The, basically, I think you're gonna use something like a total of eight to 10 towels, maybe on a typical car. It could be a lot more, it could be a lot less. More or less, it's something like 
five, six or five or six of the, the primary white ones because you're in fours, you know, you fold it into fours like this. So you have eight sides and you flip and you flip and flip until you use your judgment and say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to put that one on the side, get a new one and then, and then move on. And then you have two or three secondary white ones because the car is clean at that point. You're just kind of cleaning up a little bit of the frothy. Um, and then afterwards one or two, maybe red ones just to put the hydrate on. So not that many in theory. So again, hopefully that makes sense. How long, oh, good question. How long can frothy sit in the bottle? As long as you take or the aerator, as long as, you, as long as you take the air out of it, it could be for a couple of weeks. Uh, I, I've had it in there for um, almost six weeks now and uh, totally fine. Just when, you, when you're ready to use it again, give it a little shake, pump it up and, and you're good to go. That's a really good question. I forgot to, to talk about that in the videos. Uh, bottle, oh, two more questions. The bottle came, meaning the aerator came with a little bit of water in the bottom of it. That's because I put a lot of time and effort into finding the best of the best. And I want to make sure that nobody comes back and says, you know, it doesn't do this. Da, da, da. And so I test all of them. I do the best I possibly can. And I test all of them before we, we send them out. I want to make sure it's what's called a wet test. You, you actually test it with, with water and, and make sure everything is functioning. So there's always a little bit of moisture in the bottom. Don't panic. It's totally fine. Um, and the last one is, um, and again, a lot of you have sent me uh, just a ton of emails and I appreciate it. So I just, you know, did a short version of all the emails you've sent me. Um, so the last one is people wanted to test. This is my, uh, my, my hood that I test everything on. And they want to say, Hey, show me an example of pulling dirt off of a black car. I'm going to shoot a lot more videos on this, but I wanted to address this and make sure that, um, you guys understood where I was coming from. So I did that for you. So at the end of this, I'm going to, or right now I'm going to show you, um, that I did do that for you, but this is a practice panel that's completely disgusting. So I, I hit it with a little bit of frothy, wiped it, but the whole thing is disgusting. So I didn't prove anything at that point. So I said, okay, fine. I'll take a 105 microfiber cutting pad. I'll cut it up, you know, and get it as clean as possible. But there's scratches in here that I put in purpose on purpose so I can play with it. Then I took a little 205 yellow, a Rupes yellow pad, cleaned it up so that it'd be as clean as humanly possible within a, you know, 20 second polish just to prove a point. Then I took a, the air and I blew all the dirt because this thing sits outside in the mud purposely. And I blew all the mud and dirt back onto the spot, frothied it and wiped it. And I thought it looked really, really good. And I don't, I didn't see any scratches. So here's why this, I'm not like fully in, like, I want to show you this for 20 minutes because as a manufacturer, as it, I think it's somewhat unethical to, to do that. Why? Because you don't know how hard this paint is. You know, you can take it, you know, they do the, uh, the lighter thing and the whole night, all that kind of stuff. You have no idea how hard the paint is or how soft it is. This one's, I'm telling you guys know, I tell you everything. Um, this one is a, if there's medium soft and there's hard, this one's a little bit under medium. So it's not super, super soft, but it's borderline soft. It took like two seconds to get the scratches out, you know, polishing and it's, there's nowhere near hard. So this is a legit, like it worked on a pretty legit thing, but I just didn't feel like I could have the conscious or, you know, I could sleep at night saying, Oh yeah, there is no scratches. Again, it's a case by case basis. So I did what you guys asked. There were no scratches. Great. But I also, I feel obligated to tell you because I, I want to be ethical that you can fake this like anything else on camera. I mean, you can, you can just have super hard paint or do some kind of wacky thing to be like, yeah, it doesn't cause any scratches. I'm telling you, it's the best I've seen in terms of lubrication to avoid or minimize as much scratching. But I mean, obviously you guys can understand it'd be insane. You know, maybe the towel's really dirty the person was using. Maybe they didn't use enough frothy. Maybe the, the paint's really soft. I mean, there's so many variables that I couldn't stand behind that and feel really like I'm doing you guys a service from that. So anyways, that's all the questions that I uh, answered so far. You guys have been awesome. Again, you've been motivating me with these videos. I mean, with these uh, emails and phone calls and everyone seems to be freaking out that, they're, that it's working. And I'm like, I know it's really working. Um, so keep them coming. I appreciate it. Hope this video was helpful. I wanted to get this out as you guys are working and, and getting and starting to receive all the product and working on playing on the weekend and, and kind of having a little bit of a, you know, a, some thoughts and appreciation of like, Oh, how does this work? And if you come up with cool stuff, I'm encouraging you uh, to email me, think of something, come back. And, or if you have a weird question, like, Ooh, what about this? How come I did You know, this kind of things. I'm a super nerd clearly. Um, and, uh, I love all this stuff. So as always, thanks for watching, contact me. I appreciate the support and, uh, yeah, we're going to do a lot more. I can't wait for summer and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.